what's going on guys today I have an unboxing video for you of this guy right here the first by the way the first motherboard that I've ever seen that comes with a handle on the box it's pretty neat but regardless this is the Z87X UD7TH from Gigabyte now that TH in case you don't know stands for something pretty sweet and its logo is right there this is a Thunderbolt capable motherboard now there's not too many of these on the PC side of things and it's a very very common question as to how this works in OS 10 uh, be sure to stay tuned to my channel for that. There is some information that you guys need to know if you are thinking about investing in this. Uh, but Thunderbolt does indeed work on the Hackintosh. There's a few quirks, there's a few workarounds, there's some things that you can and can't do. But like I said, stick around to my channel for all that. Uh, but for now, this is just gonna be the unboxing of this motherboard. And besides having Thunderbolt, this is actually a very high-end motherboard. This has a ton of crazy features on it. And this is something for, you know, even if you wanna run just a Windows PC, this board will absolutely have something for you guys that really wanna max out what the Haswell platform has to offer. So with that said, let's go ahead and unbox this thing. So up at the top here by the handle, we do have a place where we can pop a little tab to get this guy open. Not to be confused with pop a cap like the gangsters in the hood do. But once you open up the box, this whole entire box within a box, so we have some box section going on, this whole thing just pulls right out of here. And uh, would you look at that? We have the board right there, which definitely looks very nice. So it uh, looks like we have a little flap here on the bottom. It's a little bit stubborn today. So. Huge box. I mean, this is probably the thickest motherboard box I've ever seen in my life. It's probably like about as thick as my hand or so, maybe even more so. So it gives you guys sort of an idea. But uh, so we have a nice little you know, transparent piece up top here. And we have the board. So the board is within its own box, within a box, within a box, which is pretty sweet. So there's the board. Judging, you know, my first impressions here, it's a work of art. Uh, it looks very nice, but we'll get this off to the side for a second and continue on with uh, the remainder of what's in the box. And, by the way, there is a lot. So first thing I'm seeing in the box here, we do have a PCI, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth card. This is Bluetooth 4.0. It's also dual band 802.11ac, so very impressive specs, I guess, for you know an included Wi-Fi PCI card, so that's very cool. Uh, also included here, uh, looks like we have the antennas for said Wi-Fi card. Here it looks like we have a little uh, USB 3.0 panel. Uh, so this just has the, uh, can't really see it through the plastic, but it does have just a, a standard USB 3.0 connection. So this motherboard does have a USB 3.0 header, so we'll get a little bit more into that. Now we do have some SATA cables here. By the looks of it, Gigabyte is going to give us six. So there's two in each one of these little bags for a total of six, three bags. So that's very cool. Also included, we have a four-way, what's this, SLI bridge. So I'm not sure if they include a Crossfire bridge, but... Here's also a three-way SLI bridge. So we do have three and four-way SLI bridges included, which is kind of weird because you're probably only going to use one uh, at any given time. At least I would certainly hope so. Uh, I don't even know how you would somehow hook two of those together. Uh, but regardless, we also have a two-way SLI. So uh, it looks like out of the box, we have no Crossfire Love from Gigabyte. Not sure exactly why that is, but uh, who knows. Oh, actually, wait. I spoke too soon. We do have a two-way Crossfire bridge. So there's that. So we have a two way Crossfire SLI, also a three way SLI, and a four way SLI. Not much love uh, for Crossfire above two. Also found in here, we have what looks to be like a, a USB 2.0 to like a floppy connection, which is interesting. I'm not really sure why they included that, but regardless, it's an extra cable. Here's the rear I.O., something very similar to maybe something like the Z87X UD5H, you know, very similar. Uh, I.O. there. Also in the box we have a little gigabyte badge and of course some awesome you know manuals and things like that which I'm sure everyone reads very in depth. Now here we have the motherboard itself and as you can see this is a very jam-packed motherboard. There's tons of stuff on here. It's not like some of the you know the lower end motherboards that have a lot of you know free space on the silicone. I think except you know everywhere around like right here everywhere else is pretty jam-packed in terms of you know features, slots, ports and things like that. So uh, with that said, let's just go ahead and start right in the middle. So right here we have the CPU socket. This is LGA 1150, not to be confused with LGA 1155. This is not backwards compatible with second or third generation Intel Core processors. You could throw a Core i3, I don't know why you would, Core i5, we're still not quite sure why you would, an i7, now we're, now we're talking, or even a Xeon inside here, and this is gonna be an awesome board, especially if you throw like an i7 or a Xeon in there. Uh, I think that's definitely the target demographic for what this motherboard offers. So I would say a general rule of thumb, if you're going less than an i7, this probably isn't a board for you, but definitely an Intel Core i7 or an Intel Xeon on the Haswell platform. 
this board will suit you very well. Now speaking of high-end CPUs, moving right up here as I briefly mentioned earlier, we have tons of room for overclocking these processors. Here we have not just one, not just two, but three four pin power headers for the processor. So you can get some crazy overclocks just out of you know using an eight pin, but if you're gonna have up to three different CPU power connectors, you better believe you're gonna get some really crazy overclocks out of this motherboard. But of course, this is for the, those enthusiasts out there that don't mind putting you know minutes, hours into finding the exact right voltages and going with some really crazy cooling solutions. Also, speaking of cooling solutions, here's that redesigned heatsink they were talking about. So we actually have a little fan up here on the heatsink, not only there, but also coming down here, uh, which I've seen on, mo on motherboards such as the Asus Sabertooth X79. Uh, we have a little fan down here, but having two fans, you know, right down here on the chipset and one up here by the processor, that is absolutely crazy to me. And of course, these are connected by a heat pipe right here so the cooling really does take place you know from all the way up here up to, you know towards the top of the motherboard right on top of the processor to all the way over and you know the heat can kind of dissipate this way you know if you have kind of a, a front to back you know kind of like a push pull configuration for your fans you can really vent out some of that really hot air that definitely will be coming out of this motherboard so that's an awesome heat sink design and by the way it looks pretty darn nice too doesn't it now moving over here to the memory slots, this is something that's very standard. Uh, we do have four memory slots, but what's really cool about this motherboard is that it supports RAM frequencies up to 3000 megahertz or 3 gigahertz, which to me is just absolutely crazy. I'd say the standard nowadays is 1600 and this is almost double that. So you can absolutely get some crazy, crazy transfer speeds out of this. But keep in mind, this is locked to 32 gigs of RAM. So you can't throw, you know, 64 gigs of RAM in here and have a crazy RAM disk or anything like that going on. If you want something like that, for now, we have to stick with the X79 platform or soon to be the X99 platform, hopefully dropping later this year. Uh, but back to this motherboard, once again, the standard 32 gigabyte limit does apply here, but you can get some crazy speeds out of this with 3000 megahertz. Now coming down here to our PCI options, as you can see, we have a ton of slots here. So we have a PCI Express by 16 slot here, another PCI Express by 16. By the way, all of these, which are 3.0. So we have a 3.0 by 16, 3.0 by 16. Here we have a 3.0 by eight. Here's a PCI 1X slot another PCI Express 3.0 by 16 slot, a PCI 1X, an SPROC connector, which is something proprietary to Gigabyte, which can be used for you know future accessories and uh, things like that. I really don't know too much about this, but I know it is sort of a, a proprietary format. It is not standard PCI. As you can see, it, uh, it's almost kind of squished in between its PCI 1X slot and this last slot, which is also a PCI Express 3.0 by 8 slot. So if you want to do a two-way, you know, Crossfire SLI, you're going to want to use this very top slot here, as well as, uh, you know, this guy down here, and that will get you your by 16 slots. Now, if you want to do, like, you know, a crazy four-way SLI, they will be restricted down to a by 8 bandwidth, but that is a ton of graphics power, so either way, you're going to see some killer performance out of that. But also, you do have, you know, your standard 1X slots down here for things like that included Wi-Fi card or any other, you know, little PCI accessories that you may want to add. Now what I'm going to do is take you guys to the southeast quadrant of the motherboard here and we're going to talk about some SATA options. So as I did mention earlier, we do have 10 SATA 3 ports on this motherboard, which is great for those of you that have tons of hard drives or you know multiple optical drives or heck, even a combination of the two at this point. Uh, but as you can see right here, we do have some different colors. We have the six black ones up here. These are the ones brought natively by the Z87 chipset. However, since this is a very high-end motherboard, Gigabyte decided to add a second Marvell controller to give us four more SATA ports for that, you know, at six plus four, a total of 10. My Marvell controller on my motherboard is significantly slower than the native one, uh, but with that said, heck, I still get some more SATA ports, so uh, I'll have, definitely have to do some testing as to whether the secondary Marvell chipset performs as fast as a native chipset, and if not, the difference between the two but regardless, you do get 10 SATA 3 ports, so SATA 2 on Haswell is now completely gone. Just to the right of those, by my index finger up here, we do have that supplemental power for those of you, you know, three or four way SLI or Crossfire users. Just simply plug a little SATA power connection into there and magically you have some more power over here. Moving just to the right of that, here we have the dip switches for those PCI lanes. So, uh, you know, just with a little flip of a switch, you can get some extra performance out of your PCI lanes, which is very cool. To the right of that, we have a 24 pin standard ATX connector. Here we do have a debug LED, which also I believe, I could be mistaken, but I believe this can double as a, like a temperature, like a thermostat. 
for your processor. I know on some other boards that is the case. I'm not positive on this one, but at the very least, it is a debug light. And so, you know, if you if your machine is freezing on boot up or something, this this can display a code that you can look up and you know try to see what's going on. And to the right of that, we have some crazy enthusiast level stuff. Here's where you can actually bust out your voltage meter and take voltages and you know readings of you know your, your VDIM, your V core, all your different you know processor voltages, things like that. And right up here, we do have the very quick uh, OC tuner buttons in which you can turn on your motherboard and heck, you know, add a few little volts or you know whatever have you right up here, which is very very neat. I'm definitely gonna have to use this and see how I can push this Core i7. 4770K that I will indeed be throwing in here. Now despite these being here, you can still go into the BIOS and overclock like we always have, uh, but if you guys just want to really quick say, oh I overclocked slightly too much and now it's not booting, you, know, you can hit the little minus button, I'm not exactly sure which one it is, but you, know, you can just hit the minus button and all of a sudden you've decreased that voltage a little bit without needing to reboot, boot into the BIOS and all that fun stuff. Moving above our quick overclock buttons, here we have two four pin fan headers. Now these guys at the top of the motherboard, one of these is obviously going to be for you know a CPU cooler, maybe the other one for a top case fan or something like that. And that's all well and good. And this motherboard does have a lot of fan connections on it, but what I don't like about this motherboard, and probably the only thing I don't like about this motherboard, is the placement of the rest of these. So in this entire midsection here, and up this whole side here, we have no additional fan headers whatsoever. All the other fan headers, and there are quite a few of them, are found at the very bottom, which is something I found weird because you're probably going to have a fan around this area. And if you look on the motherboard here, there, there's simply no fan headers at all around here. You have to run a cable all the way to the bottom, which I'm not crazy about. But regardless, we'll go ahead and, and we'll uh, take a look at the other connections we have. We have three additional four pin fan headers here. Jumping past these 2.0 headers for uh, USB, we have an additional four pin fan header here jumping past you know, all your front panel I.O. connections, a USB 3.0 connection. We have a four pin fan header here, another one, and strangely enough, a three pin fan header. I think if this is a three pin only because they couldn't really fit a four pin, but they could fit something. So they're like, eh, what the heck, we'll just throw in a three pin. It, after all, it's an extra fan header, you really can't complain. But the only thing I can complain about, however, is like I said, the placement of these, I find a bit odd. As you look up at the, you know, the center of this motherboard, Something that you don't necessarily notice right away, but there are no additional fan headers. Only at the very, very top, as you can see there, as well as, as at the very bottom here, which once again, I find pretty strange. Also while we're at the bottom, I did already mention these, but I'll mention them just one more time. We do have two USB 2.0 headers here, a single USB 3.0 header here, as well as a 3.0 header up here. So we do have indeed two USB 3.0 headers, so definitely tons of room for expansion for USB definitely pushing that you know USB 3.0 as this is a motherboard in which you know the number of 3.0 headers is the same as a 2.0 header something that isn't all that common usually there's like four 2.0 headers and you know one or two 3.0 headers so definitely cool there and uh, I guess moving up here we'll talk about audio really really quickly this board will be using a Hackintosh system as I said in the introduction so this rocks the ALC 898 audio chipset which is fully Mavericks you know Mount Lion pretty much any uh, modern Apple OS compatible. So there's really no problems right there. Just install the kernel extension, aka driver for the Windows folks, and that will work great for you. And so really quick, that is just uh, an overview of, of the face of this beastly motherboard. And one last thing that I'm going to talk about before I bounce out of here, guys, is the rear I.O. and something that is very neat. I'll go ahead and I'll uh, you know remove all these awesome turquoise connectors. I really don't know why they make them that shade. Uh, but regardless, here on the back, we have a PS2 port, which seems to be on every single motherboard. Honestly, I think this is something that they could phase out and not tick too many people off. I know there are still some gamers and you know folks like that that do use this. Me personally, I don't think I've used this since 2005-ish, give or take. So, um, but regardless, it's there. We have two USB 3.0 headers here. We have dual HDMI, which is an interesting choice. There's no display port, there's no DVI or anything. This is purely HDMI. Here we have two gigabit ethernet ports, which is absolutely awesome. Definitely check out my Hackintosh hardware video when that comes out to see if these both work. Down here we have two and two, so a total of four for a grand total of six USB 3.0 headers. Once again, pushing that USB 3.0, there are no 2.0 headers on this board at all, which is definitely something that's becoming more common, especially on the Haswell platform. There are many other boards that don't have any 2.0 on the rear IO at all. Now here's the main feature of this motherboard. We have the dual Thunderbolt 2.0 ports. Now this is not Thunderbolt 1, this is Thunderbolt 2.0. 
20 gigabits per second of bandwidth through each one of these ports. Absolutely mind-boggling, crazy insane, crazy awesome. And well, I guess you'll have to stay tuned to my channel to see how these Thunderbolt ports end up working out. Down here, we do have our traditional audio outputs, some optical audio uh, being driven by that ALC898 audio chipset. And that's pretty much it for the IO. And that's also pretty much it for this video. Thank you guys very much for watching. Definitely, definitely stick around to my channel for tons more content on this motherboard. One of the best motherboards I think I've ever held in my hands and I really can't wait to get it fired up in this system. Be sure to let me know what kind of content you guys want to see out of this motherboard. I'm at CPU Kid on Twitter. Also be sure to check out RoachTechnology.com and RoachTechnology.com slash customize which is where I can build a computer for you. I can build your dream machine, that machine you've always wanted. Uh, this is actually how I got my hands on this motherboard. So definitely be sure to check that out and I hope to see you guys back here very, very soon. Thank you.